Do you have trouble keeping your glutes on when you squat? We recently received a comment on one of our low back pain videos where the individual said, how do you activate your glutes and then squat? I feel like as soon as I do this, I lose glute activation, so I must be doing it wrong. This is a common issue and one that we're gonna fix with the exercises and routine in this video. Coach E for Precision Movement here, and today I'm gonna to help you if you've got this common problem of being unable to maintain activation through your glutes when you're doing a squat. Whether that's a bodyweight squat like this, or if you're doing loaded squats with a barbell on your back, dumbbells holding here or at your sides, whatever type of squat you're doing, if you have trouble keeping your glutes on when you do it, this is gonna really, really help you out. We're gonna dive into it and I'm just gonna give you a quick outline of the different things that we're gonna go through to get your glutes working properly when you're squatting. First is we need a stable structure from which to get the glutes activated on and to keep them on. And what, what is that stable structure? That's your pelvis. So we're gonna get the pelvic floor activated and on. Next, one area where people lose it is when they're squatting and trying to maintain good posture when you're squat, not just rounding down, but maintaining good, strong, stable, healthy, neutral posture. You need control of your pelvis. And if you don't have good control of the pelvis and your ability to maintain muscular activation during the pelvic movements, then when you go and squat and try to maintain good posture, you're gonna lose that glute activation. So control and proper activation when you're going through anterior and posterior pelvic tilt. Next, another forgotten factor when it comes to the ability to maintain good glute activation when you're squatting is the influence of the opposing muscle group, which are the hip flexors, the single joint hip flexors, the iliacus and the psoas. If these muscles aren't working well through the full range of motion of squatting, this is closed chain hip flexion, this is open chain hip flexion. In both, you need the hip flexors working during those movements to have a stable structure. So we're gonna train that. And finally, you have to do the routine at the proper frequency to make the changes stick because what we're doing is we're reprogramming movement and activation patterns. To do that, We've got to hit it with enough frequency to override your default patterns. And I'm going to go through some research that aligns with our common recommendations. So if you're ready to move, let's go. The first thing we're going to do is establish that foundation for stability for the glutes to function, which is the pelvic floor. Not much to see here. All you're doing is pretend you're peeing, or if you really want to, want to do it, you can pee and you'll get the, the full effect, but pretend you're peeing and then pretend that you're stopping the pee midstream. And what you should feel is in the pelvic area and the bladder area and the genitalia area, you should feel the tightening. And those are the pelvic floor muscles. All we wanna do is stop the pee midstream, hold it five to 10 seconds, and then release it. What I like to do is gradually increase activation and gradually release the contraction. So, Stop the pee and gradually increase the activation as high as you can. Hold it for five to 10 seconds. Keep breathing naturally. Maintain a good, neutral, tall, relaxed posture and then gradually let it go. And you do that for five repetitions and you should get that feeling. A lot of people don't have that kinesthetic awareness to these muscles. So you wanna really focus and get that feeling of what it feels like to have the pelvic floor muscles on. And the next exercise, helps you to establish that pelvic control of pelvic tilt. So the movements are, we've got anterior pelvic tilt, which is like sticking your butt out. And then we've got posterior pelvic tilt, which is like if you had a tail, you're tucking your tail between your legs. So what you can try is just standing. You could try cycling between the two. Now, a couple of things to note when you're doing this. A, when you do posterior pelvic tilt or tucking the tail between your legs, try not to let the knees pop out and not to let your weight roll over to the outsides of your feet. Try to keep your feet balanced, the weight over your feet balanced and your knees in good alignment. So you're going anterior pelvic tilt, posterior pelvic tilt, but you're not going anterior pelvic tilt and then posterior pelvic tilt where you're getting out of lower body alignment. So you're cycling between the two positions. Now, a lot of people have trouble with doing this standing. They might feel excessive activation through the lumbar extensors, and you might not even be able to get them to move. So if this is the case, then what you could do 
go into the four point position and focusing on just the lumbar spine and the pelvis, you're going, it's like a cat camel, but you're just focusing on lumbar spine and pelvis. So same thing, just cycling through the full range of motion into your pelvic tilt like so, posterior pelvic tilt like so. You're just cycling through and you could do a lot of reps until you actually start to get it, but go slow and just start to feel the muscles that are involved in those movements. Ideally, you start in the four point position. If you can't get it at all, you start to get it and then you can bring it to the standing position. And it's not a ton of movement. Don't expect your, your pelvis to have a huge degree of range of motion, but you should just be able to feel it if you put your hands on your, over your pelvis, over your hips, your iliac crests. You should be able to feel some motion there and it's tilting in one direction. You can use your hands to help facilitate, get a little more movement, but ultimately you wanna have this movement under your own muscular control. So establishing that ability to control and perform the movements of anterior and posterior pelvic tilt is a prerequisite for being able to get the glutes activated as you squat. Because when you squat, you're going down. If I were to have no pelvic tilt and I squat, it would just kind of look like this. And you see people do this a lot. When you squat, you have to control the pelvis and actively anteriorly pelvic tilt as you're descending. So the pelvic tilt control through four point and standing is a great drill to help to facilitate what you need to get the glutes on during the squat. The next exercise I have for you, I call the segmental hip bridge. And this exercise helps to facilitate glute activation in the hip bridge movement where a lot of people overuse their hamstrings or overuse their lumbar sensors. And I've actually got some research that I recently found in reviewing the literature for this video that aligns with using this technique to facilitate glute activation during squatting. The title of the study is Effects of Pelvic Tilt Control Using Visual Biofeedback on Gluteus Maximus, Multivitus, and Hamstring Activities During Three Different Bridge Exercises. And what they did is they used EMG or electromyography to study the activation levels of different muscles and what they found with respect to the glute max was that glute max muscle activity during the exercise involving posterior pelvic tilt was significantly higher than involving anterior or neutral pelvic tilt. In contrast, multifidus muscle activity during the hip bridge exercise involving posterior pelvic tilt was significantly lower than that involving anterior pelvic tilt. So when you do the hip bridge with posterior pelvic tilt instead of neutral or anterior pelvic tilt, you're using more glute max and less multifidus. Now, one note here is that you don't want to get caught in the thinking that, oh, everything is better with more glute max. That's not the case. Sometimes you need to activate the multifidus. Actually, in a lot of cases with low back pain, most cases with low back pain, both the glute max and the multifidus aren't working well. So you could use the opposite of what we're doing here to facilitate multifidus act activation, possibly. So I just wanted to make this point so you don't get stuck in magic bullet ideas or looking for that one secret exercise or answer. The body is complex and that's why we have a comprehensive approach to it and a holistic approach to it. So the segmental hip bridge exercise gets posterior pelvic tilt, but it also restores motion to through the pelvis and through the lumbar spine. And this is something that I think is superior compared to the exercises that were done in the study that I just mentioned. For this technique, you start in a neutral spine, so you have a little bit of space under your low back and the floor. And from there, you're going to lift the pelvis off the ground through posterior pelvic tilt, and then one vertebrae at a time, starting from the bottom up. So you posteriorly pelvic tilt, now I'm flattening my low back against the ground here, and then I'm lifting up one vertebrae at a time until I get to the point where I feel like I can't do any more posterior pelvic tilt or I can't really lift my spine off the ground anymore. I'm just holding here and once you get that, you'll feel a ton of glute max, you might feel some hamstring, but you'll probably feel not too much low back. Hold that for about five seconds at the top, breathing naturally. 
and then you lower in the opposite. So the upper spine goes down, the thoracic spine, and then it goes one vertebrae at a time, bup, 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 all the way down to the pelvis. And then I go into my neutral position and I gradually relax. So that's one repetition there. And again, like I said, this does two things. It gets the glutes better activated in a type of movement that you'll need for the squat. And it helps to restore motion between the pelvis and the lumbar spine. And those movements are often lost, especially people sitting all day, you get stuck. If you don't move it, you lose it. So the segmental hip bridge, one set of five reps, and that'll get that motion going. Before I continue on with the next exercise to get another neglected factor when it comes to glute activation during the squat, I just wanted to mention to all the coaches and trainers and therapists out there who follow our videos and like our approach and wanna learn more about how to use our approach and go more in depth into our approach so that they can better use our approach with their clients. We've got a course coming out just for you. And depending on when you're watching this video, you might not be able to sign up yet, but you can get on the wait list. So if you're interested, there'll be a link down in the description, click it, get on the wait list, or if the course is out, check it out. Now the next exercise we're going to use to get the psoas activated. And if you don't have psoas activation and iliacus activation, so iliopsoas, then you're not gonna be able to get the most out of your glutes. And what I've got for you today is kind of a unique exercise that I came up with for this video specifically. And I call it the psoas stamp. So for this technique, I suggest you use some kind of support. We're not trying to work your balance here. So you're just going to lift the leg up, opposite leg you want your glute on here, and you want a stable support leg. You flex your hip up and you feel that psoas on. You can push it a little bit to make sure you got the ilius psoas working. And then you're just gonna make sure you get the glutes on and then you're gonna stamp down and then stand on it. And you're gonna go again, just bring it up, hold it up for a sec, make sure the iliopsoas and the glutes are on and then stamp down and then put some weight on it. So you're coming up, holding it, glutes on, iliopsoas on, stamp down, put some weight on it. Okay, this is a good way I've found to get that co-activation you need for stable hips and pelvis in the full range of motion. Now it's an open chain movement and what we find is open chain movements are superior for activation. And then what you do is once you've got the activation, you bring it into the closed chain movement. Same thing, it's still hip flexion, but now we're in the closed chain. And that's how you bring it into activities and movements that are more functional and can transfer to the gym or sports. So sew so stamps, do both sides, one set, five reps on each, and that will facilitate the muscles and the movements that you need to bring it into the squat. And that's the last thing to do. So a lot of people, I should have said this before, but test your squat out before if you haven't done already, but most people know that they can't get their glutes on when they squat. Now, after you've done this little routine, do your squats. So you can start off, what I recommend is you start off in a neutral stance, not feet pointed out, but I want a neutral stance. You gotta train your strength in this squat pattern with your feet pointing straight ahead. Neutral stance, posterior pelvic tilt. So you sh should have that motion now. Get the pelvic floor on, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna squat as you go into an anterior pelvic tilt, keeping the pelvic floor on and the glutes. And you might not be able to get down all the way yet. The glutes are on, I could feel them, they're on. If I had EMG going, you'd see them on. But get down to whatever range of motion you can do where your glutes are on. So again, you relax everything, and then it's pelvic floor, stopping the P midstream, starting in posterior pelvic tilt, and then go to anterior pelvic tilt, keeping everything on. And if you can only get to there before your glutes shut off, cool, train that. We're training what we want, not what we don't want. And because of the way the body works, if you do this and repeat this over and over again, then you're gonna be able to get deeper and deeper because it's like that isometric window, whatever range you work, you get strength a little bit more and a little bit less than whatever range you work with an isometric contraction, which is a contraction where you don't move. So we're gonna take advantage of that and just retrain the movement pattern that we want, which is glutes on during the squat. 
So there you have it. That's my response, my long ass response to that comment in the video. But it's a problem that I've seen so, so often. And it's a problem that won't go away with just, okay, squeeze your glutes harder, squeeze your glutes harder. It's like trying to tell Usain Bolt, just run faster. Oh, you got the world record? Okay, just run faster next time. It doesn't work. You have to know what to do and get everything fixed up and your technique going properly to get what you want. It's not just about effort all the time. Okay, so this is the intelligent way to do it. And then you put effort on top of intelligence and then you get quick results. The final thing I wanted to mention was related to another study I found. And the title of the study is Activation Training Facilitates Gluteus Maximus Recruitment During Weight-Bearing Strengthening Exercises. And what they did was had the participants complete a glute max activation program consisting of some isometrics with band resistance. I don't know the specifics of it, but what they did that I think was really well done was they did a one week activation program where they had these people perform the activation routine twice a day. And after this, what they found was glute max recruitment was increased by 57% during the double leg squat and 53% during the single leg squat. So just a week doing a routine twice a day, significantly increased glute max activation during the squat and even during a single leg squat both really important fundamental movement patterns. So that's why I recommend you do this frequently, do it two times a day or even three times a day for a week. And then what you can do is taper down after that to the point where you can fire your glutes whenever you damn well please. To summarize the exercises we went through today, we started off with pelvic floor activation, where you do one set of five reps holding for five to 10 seconds. Next, we went to pelvic tilting. You do one set of five reps or up to 10 reps if you feel like it's taking you a bit of time to get into it. The third exercise is the segmental hip bridge. Perform one set of five reps, holding for five seconds at the top, moving slowly up and down in the movement. And the fourth and final exercise was the psoas stamps. Do one set of five reps per side. After that, you could test out your squats and see how much better your glutes, you can keep your glutes on when you're squatting. Most importantly, you've got to perform this routine frequently. So up to three times a day, but at least daily for at least a period of a week. And if you're improving, just keep it going until you've achieved your goals of keeping your goal glutes on throughout the full range of the squat. There we go. There you have it. Get your glutes on, get them working. Don't get stuck in magic bullet thinking, but get your glutes on just like you need to get everything else on to help you move freely and without pain for the rest of your life. Thank you for being here with me. If you wanna check out some more resources that are related, we've got some videos here and here. And if you've got pain in through the hips, then I suggest you follow our hip pain solution, which has exercises like what you found here and a lot of others to make sure everything is working properly so you can get back to and keep doing the active things you love.